Hello, good morning, and welcome. I'm Mikey Enough Dice. This is the Kerbal Space Program Training. Still in a weird order. How about when we got to the Mun last time? Oh, that's a that's an inspiring thumbnail there. Uh, I did to the Mun part one and part two. Presumably, the next thing to do is uh, from the Mun. That's a very inspiring thumbnail. Everything is on fire. So let's see how we get back. <clears throat> I'm going to assume it involves rockets. What do you think? Any ideas? Okay. Welcome to From the Mun. This is a flatter area than I landed on. Oh, there's a bit more rock than there was when I was. Valentina, very happy. In our last lesson, we landed this craft on the Mun. Hopefully your pilot has a has just stretched away from the ground. Don't we'll stop there. After that, we'll be heading home. Come Valentina did in fact uh, plant a, a flag, flag on the Mun and it's completely irrelevant and will never be seen by anybody because... Um, oh, this one's got an antenna on it. Sweet. Uh, it'll never be seen by anybody because obviously it was just a training mission and thus it doesn't capture anything. Hmm. There's an antenna on this for no good reason. Uh, in this lesson, teach you how to take off from the Mun and reach a stable orbit. Then, how to return from the Mun or any moon to the parent planet. Indeed, the same skill can be used to depart Kerbin towards other planets in the inner solar system. Lastly, for re entry to Sherman. Hint heat shield required. So, presumably, there's a heat shield on this beast. Somewhere. When you're ready, let's go. To send Valentina on extracurricular activities, uh, I'm going to assume we did that. Because we did that last session. Uh, back in time, she can get back, it's fine. If you want to skip the EVA, or you've done it already, which I did, click next. So that's all just what things you can do in EVA. West, R, jetpack up, jetpack down, jetpack movement. Moving on, return flight will have the three distinct phases. Phages? Phases. Ascent from the month's service, trans carbon injection, and trans moon re entry. Once you finish the First phase, establishing a low moon orbit will cover the next, for the next. Uh, going to have a target maneuver, exciting. Uh, throttle up the milli pitch over, down to the 90 degree heading, which is east, which is going to be that way, because north is up. I'm not sure which way is east, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to want to go hit the A key for this one. Because their red line indicating north is the opposite way around it is to the way I normally fly these things. When you start off on the, on the launch pad, it's the the red line is normally down in this case, and also 90 degrees is on that side of the nav ball. So there you go. Uh, boop -a -doop -a -doo, throttle up 90 degrees. Cut throttle when your apo just gets above 50k. Circulate at apo. So much simpler than when you did on your Kerbal ascent. Uh, because shallower gravity well um, this is the same thing you land at the moment and we're all giving it to you return. Mun's gravity must be weaker than Kerbin's plus we're not being held back by an atmosphere. Uh -huh. Ready to launch, the marker's there. Uh, go main throttle, hit Z and immediately start turning. Given your orientation when the trouble begins, that will be subbed by yawing. <clears throat> your thrust to weight ratio is very high in the Mun's weak gravity and again there's no outside to worry about you turn very very sharply without risking disaster this uh, the way a flight path would do on Kerbin will be at only will be at only 6 degrees pitch by 40 meters per second alright 90 degrees pitch is that way so uh, 6 degrees is going to be like that uh, as always, you can use SS's follow target mode to follow the mark if you're having trouble. Go ahead, let's go. Oh, like, like they, 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 whoa, whoa, they really do mean immediately. Okay. See, oftentimes it's not quite that simple when you're on the mark. But there's annoying things called mountains that get in the way occasionally. Uh, what's Miapo? Note, uh, or if your if your pitch 
relative to the terrain goes negative. As in, you are encountering a mountain. It'll pitch up. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Cursing to Apo. What is my Apo? I don't know. I'll find out. There you go. No, 50, which is a bit more than the 80, the whatever it says they want me to have. Anyway, you thought it was okay. Let's co is coast on up. Created a circular note for you. Been real life. You were doing that and planning yourself. Uh, okay, let's go to the, so we're going to go to the next minute. We're going to warp there. It said go to 50, and, and it cut me out when I got to uh, uh, 100, collect, 100 kilometers, which is slightly more than I expected. So we're now currently warping to the next maneuver. Oh, it's going to stop me at some point. I'm going to point me towards the maneuver node. Uh, burn text going to get your time to about half the estimated. I said about a second then. If all else fails, burn prograde to make sure your periapsis is no more than five kilometers lower than your apoapsis. Hmm, okay. So we're going to count down to a second. So it's going to be a little while. That's fine. Uh, you can see that my maneuver node is very close to um, just just straight prograde. And there's Coburn. Oh. There we go. To return from a moon to a moon to the body it orbits, or to eject from planet into the solar orbit, you must reach escape velocity, and it matters quite a lot when in your orbit you do so. You want to make sure that the effort you expend to reach escape velocity creates the correct resultant orbit. Switch to map view if you're not there already. Uh, zoom far enough and rotate the camera to show you three objects. Uh, oh, right. So, ship, mun, Kerbin from above. Note your direction of travel in your orbit, which is hard to do if you're also. Oh, let's, oh, let's get rid of the maneuver. Um, if you're looking down the top of an orbiting counter clockwise, check the direction of the travel of a mun in its orbit, uh, the same direction you are, so, you know. So the Mun is going counterclockwise, and I'm going counterclockwise around the Mun. We're going to eject opposite to the Mun's uh, direction of travel, but we will be accelerating forwards with respect to our own orbit around the Mun. So this is this is a bit that gets confusing, where you kind of I want to go pro, I want to go retrograde this way, right? So that's why I'm pointing. So I want I want to so because I want to go I want to slow down my orbit. My orbit is currently that way around the Mun. I want to slow it down, which means I point that way. But that actually means, as far as the MUN is concerned, I am, in fact, um, going forwards in my orbit. So that can get a little bit to get your head around. Create the return <coughs> node. Remove any existing nodes and create one on your current MUN orbit. doesn't matter where. We'll be moving it to visualize the results of your burn homewards. I think it should be there. So I'm going to add a maneuver. Drag the prograde handle, which is that one, until you have an escape trajectory. Until so, basically, right. So it's now I'm now escaping the mun. Uh, now drag the node itself and watch as Kerbin periapsis changes. You will find that you have the lowest periapsis when your ejection vector is parallel to the moon's orbital track, but heading the opposite direction, which is largely where I put it. All right. So that's my Kerbin periapsis. So I've right clicked on that. That goes up. I actually goes. Oh, interestingly, when I when I go here, I actually don't get the uh, ejection orbit. That is actually my lowest Perry. It's what I'm direct. That seems to contradict. Huh. That actually seems to contradict what that was saying. 
Oh, when my ejection vector is parallel, my ejection vector, my ejection vector is going that way. Uh, okay. Oh. There. So again, I'm just going to make sure I've got that. Oh, yeah, it's 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 there. It's right on the oh. So that would appear to be basically there. So when where that where my orbit intersects um the orbit of the Mun around Kerbin. That seems to be when, when it's time to go. How oh, very interesting. Um, right. You've now created an injection maneuver which, despite being prograde in the moon orbit, gives you a retrograde kick in terms of your eventual Kerbin orbit. You can use the same principle to travel to other planets from Kerbin, although they only need to be mindful of transfer windows, which we'll deal with some other time. Uh, once you set your Kerbin perhaps has been 5 and 30 kilometers, click next to proceed. You may need to fine tune with radial in and radial out. Okay, so. Well, that's going up. Oh, now I wish I had precise note because I've just I've just balked my I just I hit the wrong node by accident there. So I wish I had precise note so I get rid of that. Oh, where'd that go? I'm I've very much confused myself now. Right, let's move that. So I, d I don't know if I'm using too much delta V or what at this stage. Uh, that's that puts me going the wrong way. So this is really where I'd like precise node again because then I could adjust these values very very specifically. Uh, says between five kilometers and thirty-two kilometers. So that's that's yeah okay. Um, click next to proceed. Eject. Uh, warp to and execute the maneuver node you've, you've created. One that's done. Uh, so we just do that. So I want to go at ten seconds. Four, three, two, one, go. And head towards the maneuver node as opposed to the random direction I was pointing. I've lost all my Kerbal instincts. It's ridiculous. Your way home. Let's warp head until you're near Kerbin. 
click on your orbit but at least a Kerbin's radius away so maybe there oh no escape 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 I was on the I was walking to the wrong side you can alternately use a uh, period but remember to decrease your warp as you approach we'll advance and once your uh, altitude drops below 120 kilometers use auto warp you may want to manually increase time warp to 5 or 10 anyway okay so let's go to here all oh, right okay where are we and there's Kevin, so we're going to move ahead uh, until we get to 120 kilometers. Come around in the daytime, which is nice. I don't know if we're going to end up landing in the daytime, which would be nice. So 120 kilometers going to be one. So that one that clicks down to two, and that digital. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Uh, orient retrograde and stabilize. Oh, that's the wrong way. Just going to use SAS. And then to decouple the last stage and be ready for entry. So we're not going to be using any of our remaining fuel to slow down, which is the thing I usually do. Uh, re entry. Now, this is the time you do have a heat shield on the capsule. So I do. Well, it's just barely possible to survive a transmuter entry without one. It's very dangerous indeed. Try coming back directly from anywhere further than the Mun, and you'd be a crisper critty without a shield. An alternative method is avoid excessive entry, which was to be maneuver into a parking orbit and or make a braking burn, and then make a gentle slow re-entry. That, however, would require a great deal of additional fuel, and be almost as well as fun. Because the added mass of the heat shield, but no extra drag to compensate because it mounts flush with the pod, the ship won't be able to slow down as well as the pod would by itself. For that reason, your craft has a drogue parachute mounted to the side somewhere I haven't seen it where is it is that, it? Is that you no there you go drogue parachute uh, once the drag I parachute shows yes you can stage to deploy it drogue parachutes are weaker oh that was the that's that breaking up um, drogue parachutes are weaker breaking devices that work but work at high speeds and altitudes and regular parachutes in order to sit down. To work where it's safe to use the more powerful normal parachutes. So once the, the drogue is doing its part of the job, we'll continue. Right, we're now out of electric charge, which means where the SAS is doing nothing. So we're purely on aerodynamics. But uh, the drogue chute is not happy. Safe to deploy, unsafe. We're heating up, Joy. What are ablator doing? We are actually losing ablator, which is the thing in the old in uh, the previous versions. You could you could actually end up not losing any ablator at all, or very little amount. But it looks like we actually have the right amount of ablator. Uh, the heat shield is heating up, which is in fact its job. So that's good. Yeah, something did in, indeed just zip past me and explode. Uh, getting quite hot now. Although SAS is doing nothing because there is no electric charge, we are doing all right. We are still pointing. So aerodynamically, we're pointing the right way. Which is good. I can hear that the noise is coming down slightly, so we're going to... We're coming, we're coming out of thermal kind of shock. Still going awfully fast. I don't know when drogue shoots like to go. I presume not where we're on, when we're on fire. I just kind of assume that's not what they want to do. But when when precisely? Oh, okay. you can only go that high up with these things. I also want to play with camera. I want my mods back. <laughs> I'm playing it. I'm playing completely. Uh, 
vanilla, no mods at all. I want the camera tools so you can do the kind of whoosh. Because this would look kind of cool. Alright, we're still rapidly slowing down. We're about to hit go under a thousand meters a second. And so we're, it looks like we're finally going to um, stop being on fire. Just a bit of... Uh, oh, there we go. So it's saying we can go now. So... <laughs> All right, your drogue parachute is staged. Once the main parachute also shows, shows safe, stage again to arm or deploy as well, and then we'll continue. I'm, all, I'm gonna do the, no, I'll just, yeah, I'll just, I'll just go when it's actually safe, which is now, in fact. Bearing stage and activated, there's nothing to do but wait. So, I'm gonna wait until a thousand meters. And by wait, I mean accelerate. Is that the drogue chute? Oh, yes, of course, a thousand meters above ground. That's not that's not the same thing at all. Because I don't know what the altitude is like here, because we're we're in a lumpy hilly bit. Uh, so I'm not quite sure when. So that's the drogue now. That's, there we go. There we go. That's the main parachute going. So that was the drogue chute going at quite high up. When did the drogue chute go? Drogue chute went at 2,500 above the surface. And so now, what's that on the something there? I don't know if that's because that's my shadow, and there's there's another thing. But I'm guess I'm not going to find out what that is. It's going to be many kilometers away. Probably just a tree, a bit of uh, surface kind of ground scatter. So I'm speeding up again as we head towards the ground. Actually, I'm going to unspeed up. Just going to see where we are. We're just okay. We're here, which is the opposite continent to I think the KSC is in there somewhere. But we're about hit. Oh yes, that was just a tree. But um, congratulations, you've certainly returned from man. A tick tape parade would be held in your honor if this weren't a training simulation. So you have to go out and do a real MUN mission on your own and a career or sandbox save, and you still don't get a ticket tape parade. When you're ready, open the board's menu to either end or restart the scenario, and once again, well done. So there you go, we have succeeded. We have uh, come back from the MUN, and we haven't crashed, and we have landed somewhere. Um, somewhere is where we've landed. Uh, Crew report, where are we? Kerbin's Highlands, that's where we are. Oops. Um, so that's cool. And there's some bushes around here and things to look at. And so we don't get a ticket take parade, so I'm going to say thanks so much for watching. Uh, please hit like and subscribe if you're enjoying this video. Come visit Neil Enough Dice. Uh, at neilenoughdice.com and we're also on Facebook and on Twitter and you can find links to those things in the video description and until next time reach for the stars